Okay, well, I'll say Nina Mani. Hello, my name's Trent, Trent Hill. I'm a Noongar Wilman man from Western Australia. That's where all my people come from over near Perth. Uh, of course, always acknowledge that we're here on Ghana land. Okay, so Ghana, of course, are the Aboriginal people from here in Adelaide where we are today. So I always acknowledge that we're here on Ghana land. So Ghana country today goes all the way down south, down to a place called Cape Jervis these days. That's where you catch a ferry to Kangaroo Island. Then all the way back up north around a place called Crystal Brook. So that's when you way up to Port Augusta. It's a long way up there. And then from the Barossa Ranges, so just before a place called Nuriopta, all the way back down to the beach is all Ghana land. So it's a very, very big area. Okay, so I guess really today, if we can just use your imagination a bit, think what it would have been like here for the Ghana people, say, two, three hundred years ago. So there would have been all tall grass all through this area, like taller than me. The grass was so tall and thick we couldn't even see where you were going. There would have been little creeks and swamps all through here. There would have been thousands more of these big trees all through this area. Okay, today these trees here, they're called river red gums because they always grow along the river and the wood's very red on the inside. Of course, today we call big old trees like this, we call them supermarket trees, because it's like going to the supermarket for my people. We can get many different things from this one tree. And of course, for the Ghana people, we, they call them kara, very special for the Ghana people. So there would have been thousands more of these big trees here. It would have been tall native grass, creeks and swamps. The river down here, we could have had a drink straight from the river many years ago. It would have been fresh drinking water. There would have been fish, turtles, yabbies, frogs, water birds, kangaroos and emus all through this area. So Ghana people lived here along the river and creeks here in the autumn months. A lot of these places through here, they would have got flooded out in the winter time. So then you'd have to walk back up to places like Murray Alta, up in the hills there, where there's lots more shelter from the hills and caves, fresh water. So hills in the winter months, river and creeks here in the autumn months. Then of course you'd make your way down the coast, down the beach in the summer months. Where along the coast many years ago, there would have been big sand dunes, sand hills all the way along the coast. So like all West Lakes, Port Adelaide, that's all man-made concreted in today. But that area would have been freshwater springs and swamps all through there. It would have been beautiful to see many years ago. So Ghana people lived down there in those sand dunes, lots of fruit ready. There would have been a lot more seafood fish in the ocean too many years ago. So this way, my people didn't stay in one area, one place for too long. Okay, because if you stay in one place for too long, well, you're going to eat all the food and you're going to drink some of the water in that area. You need to give the trees time, the land time to regenerate, regrow again for next season when you return. So very, very important that we all look after the land. Of course, the land looks after us, so it's important that we all look after the land. Very, very important. So, so girls in my culture, girls were the gatherers. Girls did most of the food gathering. Girls would gather up well, 80, 85% of the food. So girls would gather up all the seeds and fruit and vegetables, fresh water, wickety grubs. Boys would learn a lot of these things too as they're growing up. Usually boys when they're around 12 or 13. Depends on how good listener boys were. Then they can go learn more about hunting than with dad. So men would hunt for larger animals, kangaroos and emus. So I guess like same for kids at home these days and at school, same for Aboriginal children. It's very important that they listen, then they can learn and then they know how to look after themselves when they become adults. And that's what a lot of our dreaming, our stories teach us. So when you hear Aboriginal dreaming, they, they teach us rules, rules for living. So rules what we should and rules what we shouldn't do as we're growing up. So you've got to think about what those stories actually mean too. So uh, yeah, this, this tree here, of course, this could tell so many stories, this tree. This is one of the original trees here in the gardens. So this tree, was, of course, was here before these other big trees, before the city was here, before all of us were here. Very old tree. So it's probably around 350, 400 years old, this tree. Okay, so if you look up and actually see how tall these trees grow, that's actually how deep a lot of the roots go underground, just as tall as the tree is. So we can actually see half the tree, the other half's underground there. Now today, eucalyptus gum trees, there's probably around a thousand different sorts of gum trees. They're what we call drought resistant today. That means all the water's held in the outer bark. So the water goes from the bottom to the top in the outside bark. So you can make lots of deadly things, lots of good things from that bark. And you can see this big scarring on the bottom of the tree here. Now I'm sure the Ghana men would have come here many, many years ago with stone axe. Okay, so if you have been to the museum, you'll see all the artifacts in there, boomerangs and spears and things in there. Okay, we, we call them artifacts today because they're old and special, but they're all my people's tools, tools for living. That's what we needed to survive here many years ago. So stone's one of your most important tools. We'll talk about more about that later on on the tour there. So the Ghana men would have made a stone axe, would have cut the outside of this bark off, and then slowly, you have to slowly put, them, put some uh, like wedges in there so it doesn't slip back in, then you'd have to slowly rip that big piece of bark off the tree. It sounds really easy saying that, but that'd be real hard work doing that. So when the boys get old enough, they'd come and help me. Then I don't get tired doing it myself. And at the same time, they'd be learning how to do it for themselves there. So we can make ourselves a bark canoe then. So we can go fishing down the river. We could use it for transport to get down the river. When you're using it down the river, you can leave it on the side, put some branches underneath, and that could actually be your roof for your wadley, for your shelter as well. Okay. A lot of the time, the Ghana men would make their shields from these trees, being one of the hardest barks there. From the root system of the tree, I always bring a few little tools here of my own there. That's what the girls would use. Okay. That's what the girls would use there. That's, of course, we've got permission to talk about mum and nana's tools there. Girls would use this one, this called a pity. So they could use that one for digging, carrying food, and scooping up water in there as well. Okay, as girls get older, they'd make one bigger and bigger. So mum and nana would have a big cooler one, big carrying dish. 
Mum and Nana can rock baby sleep in the real big ones too there. So that could be made from the, the side or even from the root system of the tree there as well. The other one will be up there, of course, would be pelter, possums. Now, hey, you know, it'd be up there, there'd be possum droppings on the ground and green, little green scratches going up the tree. And then you'd have to block all the hollows up, but you'd leave one open and you'd have to smoke the tree out. So he'd stay in there as long as he could, but eventually you'd have to come out to get some fresh air and you'd be waiting at that hollow and that's how you'd catch him, mate. So of course, we eat the meat from the possum. So saying that you don't, like the ducks, you don't just kill animals for no reason. You've got to catch them so you can cook them and feed your family. Okay, today, of course, we all go to the shop, the butcher, McDonald's, eh? they've got it all ready for us. Only difference is we've got to catch them for ourselves. Okay, so you don't ever take what you need. So eat the meat from the possum, use the bones for making holes and for weaving. Usually girls would use possum skin. It usually takes about 24 possum skins to make a big cloak, a big rug, and boys would use a kangaroo skin. So I've got some kangaroo skin. That's, so that's what the boys, us boys would use. Okay, it usually takes about oh, 20, oh, sorry, 12 kangaroo skins to make yourself a big cloak. Or same with possum skin, you can, you can wear them. Okay, keep nice and warm. You can sleep on him, nice and soft. This here too, this could actually be your roof for your wadley, for your shelter. So the fur, gonna keep you warm on the inside. Okay, insulation and animal skin, of course, will help keep you dry, eh? Leather. Okay, you can get the corners here. That corner, that corner. Make some holes, tie it all together. Use the tail as a strap, eh? You can make yourself a bag too, eh? So you can carry your tools in there, carry your food in there. Stitch it up tight enough, you can carry water in there. The other way around, the most precious one, you can carry your baby in there too, eh? So you keep baby nice and warm. So here you tie it together, you get another skin and cut it up into long thin strips, a bit like your shoelace. Make the holes in there with the bones there, so you use the same skin to tie it all together. Run one branch off this tree. We can make many tools from one branch here. Okay, you can make boomerangs from the curve shaped branches. Oh yeah, I think I've got boomerang here, look. So that there, that's the returning boomerang. Now that's just for practicing, throwing and catching for the boys there. That's only little one, you get real big ones, eh? So it has to be shaped like that there, like a rainbow for it to return to you, okay? So boomerangs are also a ceremonial instrument. So when you get two boomerangs together, you clap them together, make music, okay? And you could actually use your boomerang like a sword to create friction too. There's actually a boomerang down in the museum here that's actually 10,000 years old, which, which is amazing, okay? So that's telling you how long my people have known about aerodynamics, which is very clever. How long we've had dreaming ceremonies for, which is very, very special. And it's also telling you how old all of our trees are. That was made from a she oak, a cassarana tree which there would have been thousands of them all through here as well, okay? So that's the returning boomerang there. Uh, also from the branch here, you can make handles for your knives and axes, sharp tips for your spears, okay? You can make digging sticks for the girls there. Uh, what else? We can make uh, tapping sticks for music, okay? We call them boron tuk-tuk, my people. So these for music, for dreaming, for ceremonies. Okay, so these will keep in the rhythm, eh? These are actually made from another one though. That's made from mulga, this one here. Uh, different wood, so all different wood, eh? make different sounds. And of course you can get medicine too. I'm sure most have had Vicks, Vicks before, eh? Eucalyptus, so you wanna get the nice light green leaves, the fresh young ones, and the little sticks there. Just rub them in your murrows so the eucalyptus oil comes out. So good today if you've got a cold. Okay, what do you use if you had sores or scratches or sore muscles, you can rub it on your sore muscles there as well. You don't, don't ever camp under these trees. Okay, trees are alive, they're living, like us. You know, if you start in the sun too long, your skin's gonna peel, lips and things in the crack. Same with trees, eh? When they're out in the sun too long, their skin, their bark's gonna come off and their limbs, their branches are gonna dry and crack and they're gonna fall down. So we never camp under these trees either, eh? Okay, so that's that's, that's why we call it the supermarket tree. And we can get all these different things from, from the one tree there.